Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Taking a look at another 2023 Dallas Cowboys NFL mock draft. We are obviously joined by the, the NFL draft expert, but also big time Dallas Cowboy fan, no rocker. So we appreciate you coming on. Before we get into it again, I just want to say thank you to you guys. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if you are a Cowboys fan. We are running a lot of Cowboys mocks. These are some of the more fun fans to engage with in the comment section as well. So let us know how you how you think we did in the seven-round mock. And, of course, if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing. This will not be the last Cowboys mock we run. Rock, before we fire this one up, I want to just have you talk a little bit about some of the rumors that we're hearing here. Yeah, to start with the draft, um, everything that I'm seeing on Twitter from the insiders, it looks like first three rounds are going to be – Pass catcher, whether it's a tight end or, or a wide receiver, a running back, and a cornerback. So that's kind of what I'm looking for, especially in this mock draft that we're about to do. Um, so that's what I'm looking for on that side of things. Outside of that, um, obviously the D-hop rumors are swirling right yeah. now. He's back in Dallas with Des Bryant. We love to see that. He's kind of flirting with us a little bit. We see that all the time. Um, and then also um, some interesting names in the tight end market that we could be in play for for uh, – a trade, maybe a Mark Andrews or a Kyle Pitts seems to be on the market, especially if Lamar Jackson is going somewhere else. So keep an eye on those situations. Um, it's exciting as a Cowboys fan. Every off season it is interesting. Our name gets brought up all the time and it gets views and that's why I do it. So maybe it's not true. Maybe it is, but at the end of the day, I love it. Yeah. The, the, this is the, the most fun fan base. Like a lot <laughs> of people be talking Dallas Cowboys football. So firing this up, Rock, last mock we did, we went with Bijan Robinson, which would be a fun – oh, I see Zay Flowers on the board. I love that nice. right away. Um, we did Bijan Robinson at pick 26, which mm -hmm. the, the Giants actually end up sniping, which probably not going to be happening in real life as they just tagged Saquon. Right. But I think that if Zay Flowers is on the board – and, Rock, I'm going to let you talk a little bit about the prospect, Zay Flowers. I think this pick would make a lot of sense for the Cowboys. No, I agree. And I think um, a lot of answers or questions were answered during the combine. I thought he moved really well. Um, he looked right up there with a Jackson Smith and Jigma, yep. and, Jigma and then a, a Jordan Addis Addison. And so I am not shy from taking him here. I think the Cowboys also kind of have sold themselves on the smaller wideouts. It's something that we haven't seen in the past. They're usually for like six foot minimum with long arms who can high point and catch the football. But what we're looking for right now is someone who can separate and make plays, and Zay Flowers is the best one at doing that in the entire draft. And he he got rocked up. I mean, he went, uh, I think, weighed in at 182 pounds, ran a 4-4-2. Like, this dude is an elite separator, but I think he's – I think he doesn't get enough credit for being more than just a slot wide receiver. And you'll probably mm -hmm. see him in the slot a lot in this Dallas Cowboys offense, but I think he can do more, and he's very good at tracking the football in terms of pushing the ball down the field vertically. I don't know if Zay Flowers will be here at 26 come draft night, but if he Which is, is crazy. I, I think you're sprinting that card. And Rock, is he still your wide receiver too? Um, Let me check. Right now, yes, he's right behind JSN, above Jordan Addison and Quentin Johnson, Jalen Hyatt. Yeah, so, I, I'm I, mean, a big fan. I, I think it's wild that Quentin Johnson isn't in your top two or top one, quite frankly. <laughs> that being so, ooh, I would have loved Tommy Adabari going at 58 too. All right. Pick 58, what position group would you want? We can take a look at best available here, but like what, what position group are we taking an eye on here? Uh, cornerback. Right now I'm worried about the Trayvon Diggs situation coming up next year. We have to pay a lot of people, and he's going to command the most money out of all of them. Uh, and I, I love this strategy, and this is something like with teams that need wide receivers and cornerbacks – I think the depth at wide receiver is good, but I think the depth at cornerback is just even better. And like the cornerbacks you can get in day two with these top 75 picks, very, very good. Rock, what I mean, Eli Ricks, you know, is my guy, but what cornerback standing out to you here? Um, I actually love Darius Rush and where he'd fit in the Cowboys defense. He's another guy, if you watch the combine, who kind of showed yep. out. Yep. When he watches film, I thought he played a very safe, like brand of football, kind of played off about 10 yards, let the underneath throws. Um, happen because I thought that he couldn't stick with him deep. Um, but I mean, his, his 40 yard dash, I think was in like the high. Tested very well. Yeah. Yeah. It was impressive. Um, and he's got the size and the length that the Cowboys like. So it, to me, it's between rush or Ricks and I'm fine with either one of them. Yeah. And I'll give my takes on Ricks. And that's, if you're asking me which corner I'd prefer it's Ricks and you, you pull up mm -hmm. Ricks's profile and like 
you see the concerns right away, right? In the last two seasons, he's only played 15 games. Transfers from LSU in the in the beginning of uh, – or transfers from LSU to Alabama in 2022, and Nick Saban suspends him early on in the season. But when he started to play football for Alabama, that secondary got way better. And I I don't know. I'm copying him to another another cornerback in this draft. But, like, Joey Porter Jr. comes to mind. Like, yeah. really, really good length, uses his hands extremely well. And you see kind of the advanced stats here. When targeted, a 30% completion rate, 45.3 passer rating. This dude gets his hands on a lot of footballs. And it, a former five-star to high school, like, you know he has the traits. I want to see him test at the pro day. But if you're asking me which cornerback I can I think can be kind of an all-pro type of dude, it would be Eli Ricks. And I'm a fan of Darius Rush, too, but Eli Ricks would be my pick here. Yeah, no, I agree. I have Ricks about two slots ahead of Rush anyway. Um, you know, he fits just just as well as Rush into the Cowboys defense. And so. another guy to keep an eye on, uh, Julius Brent, who's not on the board, but he'd be another interesting name. Do you think – I'm seeing things like, oh, he played – or he he worked himself into the first round. No, this, no, no, no. And I thought that was ridiculous. I mean, like, he's good. I don't think he, he's, he did that well in the combine. Yeah, no, he was a guy I've been banging the table for for a while, but he, he's, he, ain't, he ain't a top 32 guy. All right, pick. Oh, I, I mean, you know, I love me some Carl Brooks. Any, yeah. like, let's start with position groups you might want to target, and then we can kind of look at best player bail while Michael Wilson's in there, too. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, um, I think he ends up being a top. I mean, he, he might go around like this area, but to me, we we tag Pollard. I think Zeke's gone. This team loves to draft running backs early. Yeah. Um, that's kind of where I'm looking, at, especially in this draft with such a deep class. And I think this is the spot you you, you go get a running back. You see the running backs that are on the board. Crazy. Out, once it gets like kind of to pick 129, 163, you're, you're not looking at as many running backs that you feel good about. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of fitting what Dallas wants to do, maybe being kind of like a, a running back duo with Tony Pollard, uh, where are we looking at here? I mean, Tank's big, Tank Bigsby is probably my running back of choice here. Where are you looking at? Yeah, Bigsby is my running back too, so he's obviously up there for me. Um, I think he does a little bit of everything. And he, yeah. He's kind of a bruiser too, which is surprising at his size. He kind of looks yeah. slight, but he can just power through people. Kendra Miller, again, another guy that runs through arm tackles. Um, if you go down a little bit, I think like Tajay Spears, like not someone too small like that, yeah. um, just because we're going to look for someone to compliment Pollard, and I yes. think Spears is similar to Pollard. Um, I agree with that take. Like I like Tajay Spears as a prospect. I just think him and Tony Pollard play a very similar game. And so you're mm -hmm. looking – I'm with you with Tank Bigsby. I, I think he can be kind of more of a, a bruiser running back, but he can also do it all. And that Auburn film, it's so hard to watch because that offensive line was brutal. I mean, like this dude was having to make people miss in the backfield consistently, and he did just that. And uh, he'd be my pick. Of, where would you go here? I go, I go there too. And Thanks. also to keep in mind for Cowboys fans, he was a official visit, visit in the combine. Oh, um, and we that. take very big stock in that as a, an organization. Yeah. Tank Bigsby's a dude. And it, I don't mean to be a weird, but like you see him like working out. He is. Oh dude. Know. He looks good, man. He looks good. <laughs> he looks yeah. really good. Yeah. <laughs> Dorian Williams here. All right. 129. Any position groups you want to target before we just look at ooh, Moro and Jomo. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, So I think that like what I spoke about earlier, hitting that pass catcher, hitting the cornerback, hitting the running back. I think we've done that. So if we want to move to any other position, really linebacker, um, interior defensive line with Moro Jomo would be huge. He's one of my favorite players in the draft. Yeah. Um, there's just so many guys in the in the first four rounds that you want. Yeah, that's my guy right there. <laughs> Who do you have over? Do you have uh Wooden or, or Jomo? Uh well, so let me see. Well, I have Wooden as my third or second three tech okay. in the rankings. I have a Jomo as my Right now, my fourth, but I think I might move him up and over Brian Brzee. Okay, I'll I'll leave it to you, and I would go with either one of those. My my lean is more Ojomo here, but would you go or any other guys that are sticking out? Or I'm assuming you're on Wooden or Ojomo. Here? Those are the two. Yeah, I mean either one of them. I'm gonna be ecstatic if I'm a Cowboys fan. I gotta go more Ojomo because he's a guy that just he. It's really rare, and I think you could say a lot of the same things for Wooden, but. Ajomo's pass rush ability from the inside is rare. And like you're seeing NFL teams try to affect the passer from the interior more. And more Ajomo can do that. Now, the question you have, and you the first thing you look at is 281 pounds. I believe he weighed in a little heavier, but he has no problem taking on double teams and being stout in the run game as well. Like this dude is strong. 
And so yeah. I, I think he's a, probably the more complete player. And I, I wouldn't argue if you wanted to go Wooden either, but Moro Jomo there is just an absolutely phenomenal pick. He plays such a frantic style of football. Yeah. Like he can just get through anything. It's so impressive to watch. And he was one of the first guys I think we watched when we started scouting yeah. this year. Yeah, like, sir. He yes, one of the first guys, and I loved him ever since. Yeah, yeah. I remember it the way back in like December we've been talking about it, Jomo. Yeah. All right, 163 here. I need – and then, I mean, you you kind of noted we probably can just go best available here, but any positions you'd be taking looks at? Um, linebacker with Cam. Uh, Cam Jones from Indiana looks good. Um, if we want to double dip at corner, Ja'Korian Bennett had a fantastic. Yes, he did. Run. Um, and he's like the last one. He's like the last cornerback that I like in this group. And then it kind of gets. It falls off a bit. It falls off a lot. But Corey yeah. Bennett, probably more of a nickel dude. But he tests. I don't know what Maryland's doing, but him and Deontay Banks, they, yeah. they got a done at the combine. They always have some guys. But, I mean, in, in with Bennett, I think he'd be a good fit to replace, like, a um, uh, what's the, the Michigan kid that we have that just Jordan, Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis, right, Replace exactly. So, um, and then going back to linebacker, Cam Jones, an athletic freak. Once he left that Indiana defense and got injured, they took a yes. huge turn downwards. So um, a high-impact player like that, you can never get enough of, especially in the fourth, fifth round. All right, I'll leave it to you, Cam Jones or Bennett. I, I'm more of a I'll, – I'll let you go here. I want to go Bennett because I yeah. loved what I saw from Damian Clark um, last year from the Cowboys, someone that we got at the end of the last year's draft. So Ja'Cory and Bennett, fill out that cornerback room. Kind of give us some some wiggle room if Trayvon Diggs leaves next year. Um, big fan of that pick. I, I think he's probably he's a prospect that's probably higher. I haven't built my big board to 1, 150 yet, but he would be a guy that I probably like more than Camp Jones, who, again, missed most of that senior year. With an yeah. All right, we got one. So many picks. We always forget how many picks the Cowboys. Yeah, you got you got to get in your bag in, in yeah. day three if you're drafting for the Cowboys. And I wouldn't be surprised if they couple some of these picks up and, and move up in, at, at a spot maybe to get a running back that they like. Right. You could go Cam Jones here now. I wouldn't fight you at all. No, yeah, and and going back to your point though, with this many picks, like this is another reason why I'm okay giving up a second for a DeAndre Hopkins or a first for even a. a Mark Andrews or Kyle Pitts. I don't know if it's going to cost that much, but we just have so many picks in the middle rounds and we're so good at drafting then that just makes yeah. a lot of sense to go get a guy like that. The I will say the Cowboys, you're right. Drafting day three, they've been getting some really good prospects and they, I could see them doing that as well. All right. I'll, I will throw Bryce Ford Wheaton into the discussion. I'm happy mm -hmm. going Cam Jones, but Bryce Ford Wheaton's kind of a guy. Yeah, I mean, talk about another guy. Just the combine boosts so many of these names. Like before that, didn't really have any interest in, in watching him, but someone I need to watch now. I, I think I'm about 180 prospects in, and he needs to be the 181st for sure. Yeah, and I haven't gotten to his film either, but as like a college football fan, saw him a lot at West Virginia. He's I, very surprising because when you watch him, you think more physical receiver who uses his body and physicality to go up and win, but then he runs a 4 3 8. Right. And then he jumps 40 inches vertically, like way more explosive than you see as a player, which is like something that's excites you, like use some more explosiveness. So between Cam Jones, uh, those are the two guys that are standing out here. Where where would you go here? Let, let's take a flyer on the West Virginia kid. I, I think someone who can be on the outside for the Cowboys is it's something that we're missing, especially with depth. And I think he'd fit right in. And that offense just sucked. Like, I, I think if you get better quarterback play, like JT Daniels just really struggled to push the ball down the field. And you probably mm. could get kid. Did Cam Jones come off the board here or what? Um, oh, I did. That's tough. <laughs> Take a look at this linebacker class, though. And I I agree. This linebacker, and Muhammad Diabate would be my guy, but he's like 6'4, 220. Like, he's yeah. a string yeah. bean out there. I don't know. Um, I don't love those linebackers, to be honest with you. No. Um, we, did we get a tight end? We didn't get a tight end, right? No, we haven't yet. Let's take a look. Let's take a I look. I like Davis Allen. Have you watched Davis Allen? Or Will? Yeah, Allen? he's he's so – he just reminds me of all the tight ends you guys have. Now, yeah. I'm not saying <laughs> just because they're white, but like Jake Ferguson, yeah. um, Peyton Hendershot. I think there's one more that I'm missing. Who's the Michigan um, cat? Um, uh, John McCune. McCune. <laughs> it's just another body, so I don't – like are you, you, you in on that one or what? Well, I actually have Will Mallory higher. I think he's someone um, four, five, eight speed who can kind yeah. of stretch the seams a little bit more than the rest of our tight ends can. Um, so that would be my pick out of all these guys. I haven't watched Jack Coons, but a combine guy for sure. I mean, he might—he's the biggest freak in the entire class. So 
Yeah, Will Mallard did. He did a phenomenal – like, the production wasn't there on the field because that Miami offense run by Josh Gaddis was brutal. But he's a guy that I think you you get him in the right fit. And he's a pass catcher too. You don't want to ask him to inline block. He he ain't that guy. Mm -hmm. But in terms of being a weapon in the passing game, I I think Will Mallard really – and you got guys like Sean McCune, very solid blocker. So, I – I would be all right with Will Mallory here at 176. Love it. Give Dak some weapons, finally. Well, not finally, but again. Yeah, just continue to build the depth. And that's a position that you guys – and I think they're all solid guys. And I, I'm almost excited to see you. I mean, I like Schultz, but, like, get a really impact tight end like a Mark Andrews, mm-hmm. like a Kyle Pitts. That'd be fun. And, man, if we didn't get a running back, I would be getting <laughs> yeah. I He won't be here. He, he won't, won't be here. here. He won't be there. Ricky Stromberg, man. You like him that much? I love Ricky Stromberg. Like a three year start at Arkansas. He I think he's a plug and I don't know if he's like um like an all pro type of dude, but I think he's a guy that if you have him on on your offense line, he's gonna be able to play. I so I watched him last year because I thought he was gonna come out last year. Yes, I did too. Not doing that, obviously. Um, but something that I noticed, which is really odd, is that man, especially last year, was 20 yards down the field on pass plays, like every other snap it was so odd it's just the scheme they run but i don't know the eagles would love him because that they all do that so it was just funny something i picked up on um Mm. asim richards have you watched him yet oh i haven't okay so he athletically gifted um super strong upper body strong core someone that after the combine again is probably going to rise a bit i know daniel jeremiah was talking about him um And if we're talking about a guy with some position flex as well, I think he could play tackle or guard. And that's something that we always look for as a Cowboys team. Like we want guys like Tyler Smith who can play tackle, guard, right guard, right tackle, anywhere you want. And Asim Richards, I think, is kind of that guy. I am 100. That is like my favorite thing to do when I'm picking like tackles late day three is like get a guy who can play all over the field for you because he's probably not going to be a starter for the first couple of years. But if mm-hmm. you need him in a pinch to play right tackle, to play guard, you go plug him in. I, I, I'm i I'm fully with that, and I think that's a, a really strong draft strategy when you're taking offensive linemen late is just mm-hmm. get some get some good football players who might not be all pros at uh, all pro left tackle, but if you need him in a pinch, they can play at a high level. Right. 246. Who? This is the last pick? Yeah, last, yeah, last pick. pick here. Close this out. Man. I'm trying to look at some guys that I, that I like. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I love me some Dante still. I, was about, I knew that name was going to go. I feel like I take him in like every seventh round mock I do. Yeah. Um, Eco Leota, that's a guy we don't talk much about. You love Eco. Yeah. He's a guy that like when I watch, I remember like watching Auburn doing my summer scouting last year with Dill. And he's a guy that was like, you're watching Derek Hall, you're watching Kobe Wooden. And then. Eco Leota is like, this guy wins every time. You see the pass rush win rate, and he only played five games this year for Auburn, but holy smokes, does this dude impact the pay? And he's probably not a guy you're playing on first and 10, second and five, but third and longs, like, I think he's a dude that can make some noise. And he's he's edged. Now, he's, a, he's not a linebacker, because from what I remember, he kind of stood up sometimes and, yeah. and dropped back in coverage, but he's an edge. No, he's a, yeah, he's a straight-up pass rusher, and he was more just like playing in that kind of like that rocket – that rocket yeah. set, like where it's like you you want just as many pass rushes as you can get on the field. I think he's a dude that I don't know if he. I mean, with all those pass rushes you guys got, I don't, I don't know if he's playing immediately, but uh, he's a guy that I think can be a pass rush specialist at the next level, and that's something that a lot of NFL teams want. Yeah, no, I'm fine with that, especially with Demarcus Lawrence probably going to be a cap casually next year. Get him behind yeah. the, all of our defensive ends and and let him learn. And uh, yeah, I, I actually really like that pick. I might need to start in court for these mocks. Like, I always like find like some of my sleepers that I can get in the seventh yeah. round. I think I'm gonna add them to that list here. Let's see how PFF greatest out. I actually did a Bills mock the other day, and I got an A. And I'm like, that's probably wow. if, I'm, if I'm getting an A at PFF, I'm probably doing something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, right. They like it. They love it. A solid B. I mean, the the one pick they don't like is Eli Ricks, and I think. Rock, you and I both agree, like, we're much higher on Eli Ricks than the consensus here. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, a guy with all the traits in the world, five-star recruit for former five-star recruit, um, played in a bunch of defenses. And I think if he would have stayed – he was at LSU, right? Yeah. Okay. If he would have stayed at LSU, I think his tape would have been a lot cleaner. Um, Transferring from one defense to another, especially in the SEC, is very difficult to do. 
Um, but he started to show out towards the end of the year. So yeah, I was when, he, when he was on the field, he was very good. And then you watch that Mississippi State film, like that air raid offense. He was put on islands a decent amount mm-hmm. and, I mean, held his own at a high level against some solid wide receivers. I, I, I'm really high on Eli Ricks, high, higher than probably anybody in the draft community. Yeah. Favorite pick, though, and it probably has to be more Joe at 129. Yeah, it's a value for sure. Is it, and is he's a, a guy that's just – he's going to play, but he he can do so many- – 129 but if he is like go get a really good football player um that'll close us out will mallory they're obviously not in love with him and i that's again pick 176 you're finding a guy that maybe can provide a skill set that you don't already have but this is probably the best cowboys mock we, we've done yet yeah no I, this is I, I think pff agrees like this is probably the highest grade we've gotten from yeah. pff i love it yeah we crushed it all right appreciate you guys for checking us out as usual again if you like this Consider subscribing to the channel, and then more importantly, let us know in the comments section what you guys think. We'll be there chatting with you guys as well. We appreciate y'all, and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.